So the first thing you do is isolate the absolute value. So this is a greater than absolute value. And when it's a greater than absolute value, you always form two, inequ two inequalities. One of them is 3x, that should be a minus, let me erase that. 3x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 6. Because if this amount here, what's inside your absolute value bars, if it's a 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, if it's greater than 6, it gives you a true statement. Because 7 is greater than 6, 8 is greater than 6. And your other one is going to be 3x minus 1 less than or equal to negative 6. Because absolute value of negative 6 is 6. Absolute value of negative 7 is a 7. And 7 is greater than 6. And then just solve both of these. So that gives you a negative 5. X is less than or equal to negative 5 thirds. And this one's 3X is greater than or equal to 7. X greater than or equal to 7 thirds. And a greater than is an or, so you need both pieces. So that's going to be negative infinity to negative 5 thirds. Union, 7 thirds, positive infinity. So there's your solution. Now, um... For number 21, once again, you need to isolate your absolute value, and that's going to give you 15. And I work this one a little bit differently than how they show in the book. Know that an absolute value less than is an and, and you could form two inequalities, but it's easier to just set up a compound inequality quality like that. That means 2x plus 5 is less than 15, and then your other piece... 2x plus 5 is greater than negative 5. That's your other piece. So whenever it's a less than, what I do is form a compound inequality. So this would be 2x is less than 10 is less than subtract 5, negative 20. And it's going to be negative 10 is less than x is less than 5. I divided everything by 2. So this is already halfway set up for interval notation. It's going to be negative 10 to 5.